As a knowledge worker, our ability to find information online is critical. So I want to share with you a few tips that I've learned over the years that help improve my ability to find information through Google searches. Now, as a disclaimer, I do work at Google. I'm a product manager, um, but I do not work on the Google search team. And none of this information is secret or anything like that. All views are my own, not those of my employer. And like I said, these are just tips I've learned over the years that I think would be useful for others to know. So I have this video broken into three parts. The first one is basics, which actually covers about 95% of the way that I use Google search. The second one is more advanced topics, which I may use one or 2% of the time, but it can be useful for you to know that they exist. And then the third one is actually Google specific tools that you may not be aware of. So my first tip is actually based on the way that Google search works. It's super basic, but it's a good foundation to understand. So when Google goes out and looks at pages, it categorizes what that page is about. So if you have a website talking about taking care of plants, pages might be categorized with plant, watering, maybe some plant names, maybe botany. And those are the ways that Google categorizes what information is on that page. And those are called keywords. So just like Google categorizes a page based on keywords, you should also use keywords in your search. So rather than searching for how much water do I give succulents, just search watering succulents and Google will find information. I have found in the past that if you search the entire question, then what actually happens is that you find SEO heavy websites that have optimized for those types of queries. And it's very formulaic. It's very structured information and usually doesn't have the quality of information that you're really looking for. So I would recommend simplifying your queries down to just the basics. It also will save you time typing. Now, if the results don't return exactly what you're looking for right away, don't get discouraged. You might need to find a different set of keywords to be able to find it. And as a last resort, you can always go back to searching your entire query. But I find that most of the time, Google will be able to find the information you're looking for right away. So a quick bonus tip. If you have a page with a lot of links, such as a Google search, you can use control click or in a Mac command click, and that will open up those pages in different tabs. I find this really useful when I'm searching because when I'm on a new page, I might want to navigate to other pages, but I don't want to lose the search that I was originally starting with. So each page lives on its own tab. I can quickly dive into it, see if it has the information I need. If it does, great. I can close all those win that window down. If it doesn't, then I can go to the next tab and look for it there. If you're interested in a video with all the shortcuts I use on a Mac, uh, please let me know in the comments below and I'll see if I can create that for you. So my second tip has to do with the first one. If you're not finding what you're looking for just by using the keywords, then sometimes you need to add quotes, maybe adding a phrase to what you're looking for just to help narrow things down. For example, I do a bit of programming and if I search for if by itself, it's very generic. It wouldn't really find what I'm looking for. But if I put quotes around it and say if statement, as in like a if statement within programming, that will usually bring what I'm looking for, especially if I add a programming language around it as well. So my third tip has to do with dates. Sometimes you'll see results and they look a little bit dated. Maybe it says the best backpacks of 2018. Well, it might not be the most relevant information for what you're looking for. So instead of adding a date to your search, I would recommend instead click on tools and then click on any time and then say past year. And that will filter it down to just things that have been updated in the past year. I do this especially when looking for products, trying to find more recent things rather than outdated things that might not be for sale anymore. This also works great for breaking news. So maybe you hear something on Twitter or you hear something at work. Maybe if you search for that topic in Google, it doesn't bring it up to the top quite yet. What you can do is uh, filter for dates and say within the past 24 hours, and that will usually allow you to find the more recent information that you're looking for. So my next tip has to do with finding pages that don't load currently. So this could be a 404 error that's currently happening, or maybe you're on Reddit or Hacker News and the page just can't handle the load of traffic. You can copy that URL into Google and then click on the three dots and find the cached version. This would be the last version that Google saw of that page. And this can usually allow you to get the information you're looking for without having to wait for 
the web admin to actually fix the page and get it back online. So my next tip has to do with searching a particular website. Maybe you come across a site and you just can't find the information you're looking for. Maybe they don't have a search. Maybe their search sucks. What you can do is go control L and that will jump you to the URL bar. Click left just so you're not selecting the address. Type in your search, hit space, site, colon, and then Google will search that website. Uh, you might need to remove the ending part of the URL just to make sure it's searching just that main domain, but that can be a quick way to quickly find what you're looking for. You can also do this for top level domains. So you can search .gov, .edu, .com, uh, .uk if you're looking for things on a global scale. I have never needed to do this, but it's available if you need it. This next tip has to do with images. Sometimes you're online and you're wondering where did this person originally get this image? Or you're just curious to learn more about it. If you're using Chrome, you can right click and say search by image. Otherwise you can save it, go to Google, click on images and then upload that image. Now I've also done this with personal images. So the other day I was looking at a background image I had of a lighthouse. I couldn't quite remember where I'd taken the photo. So I did a screenshot of it, uploaded it to Google and Google was able to find exactly where it was taken. This is really useful for um, finding locations um, or finding things that are similar to what you're looking for. So definitely give it a shot. Oh yeah, bonus tip number two. When you're looking at images, you can also go to tools and then click on size and then you can filter for just large images. I would use this all the time in school when I was building presentations just to make sure the images were great quality. Now, if you're using this for commercial work, also make sure to check out the usage rights to make sure you're using correct images. Tip number seven, I don't have the best of memory. So I will often forget the name of a company or a product or a person. And so this type of search really helps. It's called a verse search. A lot of people online will write product A versus product B. So you can use this to your benefit. For example, let's say that you can't remember the uh, kitchen store that you really like to go to. Well, you can just type in Williams Sonoma, the one that you do remember, versus, and then in the autocomplete, Sur La Table will show up. I really enjoy being able to do this. It saves me a lot of time. All right, my last basic tip also has to do with my poor memory. I'm a notoriously bad speller. So if I'm in a program and the spell correct can't figure out what I'm trying to type, Google will always know what I'm typing. I can just copy that word into Google and 10 times out of 10, it'll have the right um, suggestion for me. If you found any of these tips useful, please hit that like button so that others can find this video too. This next section is all advanced topics. You don't have to memorize them, it's pretty straightforward, but you can click on settings and then advanced search. And there's a form you can fill out that has all of these options. I'll run through these pretty quickly because they are very simple. You can search for just a certain type of file. So you just do file type colon, and then you can put in MP3 or a PDF or whatever type of document you're looking for. If your search is pulling up information that you're not really looking for, maybe it's pulling up a similar topic, but not the one you're looking for. Sometimes using a minus to remove that other topic can be a really useful way to get to the information you are looking for. Other times you're trying to find two phrases within a search. You can put quotes around each of those and then put in and, and it will force that both of those have to be in the document. You can also do an or, but I've never seen a use case for that. I'd just rather do two separate searches. Inside of quotes, you can also put an asterisk and that will become a wild card for any other word that could potentially fit there. You can also search for a range. This could be useful if you're searching for a product within a certain price range. Okay, we're done with the advanced topics. Now these are Google specific tools. I'm sure that you've seen some of these, but I'm guessing one or two of them might be new to you. Search for weather. I'm sure you've done this before. Just put in your city, put in the weather. Great, you've got the local weather. You can also do this for a vacation, no problem. Did you also know that you can do this for sunrise and sunset to know exactly what time those happen in your location? This is super useful as an amateur photographer to know when golden hour and blue hour are. Tip number 15, math. I'm sure you've typed in equations and you got the recalculator with the result. No big deal there. I mean, it is cool, but did you also know that it can do graphs for you and it'll simplify the equations? I didn't know this until I accidentally typed something in for this video and it came across that. I think that's really cool. There's also a mortgage calculator. 
which reminds me that I can't afford a house here in San Francisco anytime soon. All right, next up is converters. So you can translate between languages. I'm sure you knew that. You can also do distances. You can do currencies. And then for you front end developers out there or designers, you can convert colors to search for color picker. And you can change hex to RGB to HSV, all of these different combinations. Super useful. I wish I would have had that as an iOS developer. If you click on the down arrow on this, it'll actually pull up other um, tools and games that you can do right there in the browser. So, so things like a spinner or a metronome. Google has also partnered with a bunch of carriers. So you can put your tracking number right into Google and get a quick breakdown of exactly where your package is. Down to the last two. Number 19, timers. So you can search for a 25 minute timer for a Pomodoro technique. And when it's done, it'll give you a little chime and give you a notification. There's also a stopwatch here um, if you wanna use that. Tip number 19 is one of my favorites. You can search for how many days until a particular event. So how many days until the end of the year? How many days until the 4th of July? How many days until the first day of summer? This is really a fun way just to be able to do a quick countdown. You can also use different units of time and you can search for dates in the past. So you could say how many hours since I was born and just be reminded how old you really are. In the description, I added a link to an article that had a bunch of Google Easter eggs. This can be a lot of fun to check out and share with friends. That's all I have for you today. Uh, please hit that like button if you enjoyed any of these tips and please consider subscribing. Thank you, have a great day.